Hello, my friends. Um, I want to do uh, uh, this video on the great lymphatic system. I, I have one, I think it was the second one or third one that I did, so I'm going to repeat that to some extent. And uh, I think this is key that uh, you understand what the lymphatic system is. There's different theories. The medical theory is one where I feel holds no water, and the massage uh, uh, modality kind of picked up on their theory, and I think this is a very bad theory. doesn't hold any water. Uh, before I do that, I wanted to uh, comment. Now, just before that, I did a question and answer video, and this question is from Girl Gone Vegan, Kelly, and the question was, and I'd never heard of this uh, drug, which was uh, Cortef, and the way this is spelled here, it's, uh, but Cortef. Now, the way you were asking this uh, Girl Gone Vegan, you were asking about cayenne pepper, and if it's a wonderful herb and all this, and then Cortef. A friend of mine used low dosage of Cortef for three, you put two Fs, but it's Cortef, uh, for three months, and her adrenals are healed. And uh, this was a question relating to adrenal fatigue. Well, Cortef is a, is a hydrocortisone uh, or a cortical steroid. And Kelly, you know better. That statement that some girl used uh, cortical steroid for three months and cured her adrenals is like, that's the most insane statement I've heard uh, somebody make. Uh, you don't regenerate adrenal glands with cortical steroids. You've heard me over and over uh, tell you that in, in medical naturopathic and probably in homeopathic, we all have the same understanding with steroids, hormones, and neurotransmitters, and I might add digestive enzymes. You take these and you'll lose your glands. Uh, if you get the, uh, the PDR on uh, Cortef and read it, you'll find just the opposite. It causes hypoadrenal insufficiency, meaning it shuts down your adrenal glands. Well, that's what steroids do. You can't take a steroid, a hormone, or a neurotransmitter and expect your glands to do better. It's actually going to make them weaker. We've talked about this many, many times. So that question, I thought, uh, you know, very, very in in inappropriate when you, when you made that statement because there's no way that, that, that that's even possible. Matter of fact, the, the indications are extreme infections at times, uh, death from these infections, um, uh, optic nerve damage, uh, ocular cataracts. Um, I mean, there's a whole line of symptoms. Glaucoma, uh, damage to the optic nerve. Um, I mean, it goes on and on and on. And of course, women who take it that are pregnant, uh, children can have very serious uh, hypoadrenal problems, which means high neurological problems, st uh, steroid problems, sugar metabolism problems, diabetes. I mean, there's a whole list of problems that if you read what your adrenals are and what they do for you, imagine if they didn't. And that's what you would be getting if you're taking cortisol. This idea that you have of taking some kind of pharmaceutical overcoming your problems, you should have left that a long time ago, honey. All right, I want to get back to uh, this, uh, this uh, video on the great lymphatic system. If you do not understand your lymphatic system, you will not understand anything of what the medical doctors loosely call diseases. Uh, medical doctors blame all a man's suffering, all the pain, all the swelling, all the tumors, all the cysts, all the fibromyalgia, all the lupus, all of these things, they blame on ticks, they blame on Epstein-Barr viruses, they blame on, they blame, they love to blame the pathogens or the little microbes of bacteria, they love to blame all these people. The problem with it, nothing could be further from the truth. This is the problem, they're riding a wagon down the wrong road, and that road is dark, there's no answers. There's no answers to the questions down that road, and everybody ends up getting hurt or dying going down that road. Very few. Nobody walks out, out of medical treatment with a robust sense of vitality and health because that's not their gig. That's not what they do. And I thought the lack of understanding of the body's major fluid 
and focusing on the minor fluid, the blood, is very inappropriate for any type of health understanding because 99% of man's suffering has nothing whatsoever to do with the blood and has everything to do with the lymphatic system. So let's go over the body's lymphatic system because it's really easy to understand that system. The theory allopathically uh, doesn't fit if you understand the body's lymph system and you start watching it work properly when you get it fixed, you will start to confirm and see all these things we're going to talk about here. So if you stop and think about the human body for a minute, the human body is simply just a bunch of cells. A hundred trillion cells roughly uh, comprise the human body, head to toe. So if I'm looking at your liver, I'm just looking at a bunch of cells. If I'm looking at your heart, I'm looking at a bunch of cells. If it's a female, I'm looking at the ovaries or the uterus or the cervix, what am I looking at? A bunch of cells. If I look at a man's prostate, testicles, a bunch of cells. If I look at your muscles, if I look at your bones, a bunch of cells. If I look at your brain, a bunch of cells. How about your skin? A bunch of cells. So the human body is comprised roughly of a hundred trillion cells, so the buck stops at the cell because everything you experience in the human body is because of cells. Whether they're producing your hormones that make things happen, your steroids that make things happen, your neurotransmitters which turn on the nervous systems, all these things make everything happen. So your endocrine glands in the human body are really the bosses. They're the, the best government that you ever had because this government helps all the people by what they produce and everybody works together. So the buck stops really at the cell. So if we took the body apart and we said, okay, wow, everything's a bunch of cells, what else is in there? Well, two major fluids. There are two major fluids that flow around all the cells. These two major fluids are called interstitial fluids, which simply means fluids that flow around the cells. Right? Now, that comprises the predominance of the human body. Outside of that, you have some bacterium, which is essential. Every septic system I know of has bacteria in it, and you would never kill the bacteria in your septic tank. You do that, and you're in trouble, and we'll go over that here in a minute. People have some viruses. Eh, get rid of them. They're easy. They're proteins. They're not little single-celled organisms. They're like antigens. Their job is to... Uh, bond, if you will, to the weaker cells to create immune response. You can have high viral loads in your body and never have a problem. High hep C, high HIV viral loads, no problem. When they start bonding, now you have to the cell, now you have AIDS or you have, uh, you know, the deter deterioration of the liver or whatever virals that are involved. HPV, it doesn't matter. But till then, they're, they're just a protein that you can detoxify out of the body. Doesn't matter. Uh, herpes, it doesn't matter what it is. You can detoxify these out of your body. Now, we got some protozoa. Some people have worms and flukes. Okay, clean these out of the body. Not difficult. And there's some chemistry in the body. But outside of that, the predominance of the human body is simply just cells and two major fluids. And these two major fluids, of course, their job is to take care of the health of the cells. Right? And these two major fluids are very simple to understand because it's easy to understand what one has to do to be healthy. Every house that I know of is full of, uh, have two rooms in them that matches these two fluids. Uh, cars have these two areas in them so the motor can run efficiently. Everywhere that I see in the world, you have two things taking place. Creation is more or less a consumption and elimination uh, um, activities. Almost every, everywhere you see is consumption and elimination of energetics, of chemistry, and then the, the elimination of, of wastes or byproducts from the interaction of chemistry. Whenever chemistry comes together, there's always byproducts eliminated from this. So we see that in industry, and of course we call the byproducts of industry pollution because most of the places just dumped them in the water, dumped them in the air, dumped them into the ground. So uh, we likely call that pollution. But plants eat and eliminate, animals eat and eliminate, humans eat and eliminate, everything eats and eliminates at this level. Well, that could also mean the cells, right? Every cell in your body just about eats and eliminates as well. So we, we find that we have two separate issues that we have to deal with. The eating, 
or the uh, consuming of nutrition, but then also the eliminating of waste. Because we don't, some people don't stop and think that the reason why you eat is to feed a hundred trillion cells. Every cell in your body requires carbon, which is sugar, and oxygen, just like a car. Carbon is gasoline. Got to have it or your motor doesn't run. If you don't get a sugar, if you don't get glucose or fructose or galactose as a baby, you don't run. You're not, that's not good. You're going to lose your cells because uh, glucose or fructose or galactose is broken down into carbon, which is carbohydrates, is carbon chain constituents. That's why they're carbohydrates. And you have simple carbohydrates and you have poly or complex carbohydrates, which are called starch. But carbohydrates are simple fruits and vegetables. You, that is the requirement of most vertebrates on this planet is to have some. And our, our particular species, the Homo sapien, is exclusively fruits and vegetable eaters, herbivores, exclusively vegetarians. We're frugivores, so our diet should be exclusively fruits and berries and maybe some melons. Hard for vegetables even for the Homo sapien, but we can tolerate them. But nothing else. We are essential carbon beings. Remember the carbon print. Oxygen, here's our carburetor. And we mix oxygen and carbon at the cellular level to get ATP, adenosine triphosphate, energy for the cell. So vital that we have those. So nutrition is important, no question, but it's not, it's easy. Nutrition is easy to understand. It's easy to understand that no animal cooks their food before they eat it. That's easy to understand. Why do you cook food? You know, when my man, if you look at the Homo sapiens species, and this is according to National Geographic and many other well, well educated uh, groups, that the human species is a frugivory species. Just look at which animal in the, in the, in the world we, we resemble. These are frugivores. In other words, we don't have anything aggressive. We're not even like uh, primates. We don't, we don't have anything aggressive that would show that we destroy our food before we eat it. We simply have very simple tools to pick, peel, and eat. It's just it's that simple. So we're true frugivores. Of all the species, we're the truest of frugivores. And yet, we don't pay any attention to raising our fruits good. These farmers have lost their ability to raise good foods. They don't care anymore. Nobody cares. So we have some of the crappiest foods in the world here in America. Sad. We have to go to the tropics somewhere to eat decent anymore. I think it's just sad what's happened to this. This uh, farm aid needs to turn up the heat on these farmers and start getting them to respect the land better and to respect the quality of their, 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 their activity, their produce, so we all can eat good. You know, that's the key to survival is consumption of some sort of chemistry or, or magnetics. But as vital as it is to eat, it is also vital to eliminate waste. And if you look at, if you have had a little baby in your life, you have two things that you must do to that baby for that baby to be well. You must feed them, but you must also change the diaper because he who shall eat shall also eliminate waste. And this is also true at a hundred trillion cells. If you, if you look at the body, you have basically two major kind of waste and one sub major kind of waste. The major waste, one of the major wastes in the human body is digestive waste. That's obvious. That goes out the stool, goes out the colon. That's digestive waste. What about cellular waste? What about waste from 100 trillion cells? What happens? Well, medical doctors pretty much believe in the theory that you poop in your kitchen. Pretty much you dump your cellular waste right back into the venous system, into the blood. So, massage therapy bought on that theory, and uh, if you do a lip drainage, they're draining to the inferior vena cava, basically to your heart.